Welcome to today's live event. My name is Nelly Deutsch, and I'm going to walk you through Consensus, my favorite research tool for research papers and for writing. Let's get started with what's on the left. Notice here, if I click on that, I get this page. If I go on to time, I can see the history of my work as well as lists. Okay, I can view all the lists. Currently, I only have one list and one paper. Let's continue here on the left. Notice my favorites. Again, help center if I need it and my site. We're going to close that up and go into the top here so we can get the search area. Notice you can filter these by going into filter. I prefer things that are really current, but sometimes you have to be careful because it depends on your topic. If your topic is AI generated tools, you might find that you may go back into 2023, but I'm going to try 2024 for research. I'm interested in open access. I can also ask if the paper is available, that's in beta right now. Citations, um, notice um, the methods. Okay, I can choose from all of these meta-analysis, systematic review, RCT, and if you're not sure what they are, you can read all about them. Non-RCT, observational study, literature review. Now, I'm interested in literature review at this time, going to hit apply. Uh, actually, uh, I might want to choose one of these and um, I'll choose this one at the top or, and the second one as well and apply. I can always reset and go back and make changes as things go by. Now notice these are um, topics that they've added here for your convenience that you might want to check out and find out information. It doesn't just have to be for research. It could be for you to gain information about various topics like sleep. Most of us are interested, I think. Um, tell me if you're not interested in sleep, mental health, environmental sci science, economics, pharma and biotech supplements, education and learning strategies. That's my area, but there are others. Notice um, lots of areas. Going to go into education. Notice here there's a question. How does socioeconomic status affect educational outcomes? Okay, gamification and student learning. That's interesting. All right, but I am going to start from scratch. So let's go back into the search area. And this is the question that I'm going to ask that's related to education. And notice my topic, AI tools for TESOL, teaching English to speakers of other languages, right? So notice um, there are some papers here. We're looking at 2024 and onwards. Okay, this is just to let you know uh, what I've already added before. If you go into um, the papers, there are a few of them here. You can ask this paper notice. Okay, this is a paper called uh, Applications of Smile Extracted Lenticles that is not connected to my topic at all. Okay, so um, we're going to have to uh, make some changes since this is not related. Uh, notice none of these are actually related to my topic. So let's be more specific so that we get to what we want. And that's always really, really important. So let's try again. Okay, so notice I've elaborated on the question and uh, let's take a look at what we get now, looking over the research, pro analysis, and now we're getting into it. So you have to be quite specific as you can see, so that, uh, and perhaps not add acronyms or clarify what the acronyms are. So these studies suggest that AI tools like chatbots can assist in personalized student advising while other studies highlight the challenges and benefits of preschool teachers in implementing English language teaching. And notice I can ask a paper if it's available. 
I can get open access and I can get a literature review. And remember, what I'm interested in is literature review. Uh, notice there's the preschool applications of uh, Smile Again that's not related, but it stayed here. There are a few papers that I might, might want to look at. And uh, there's a summary. Let's go into these five papers. Notice once again, I may need less current. So I went into 2023. Let's apply that because I'm not getting enough here. Notice, um, okay, now I'm getting more. What are the benefits of AI and language teaching? AI tools, okay, uh, for enhancing. Let's see. I clicked on that. And notice now I'm getting quite a bit, uh, which is wonderful. So again, uh, what are the benefits of AI in language teaching? AI for enhancing English language learning and challenging the UI in four. Okay, so this is the one that's more specific to what I'm looking for. Okay, because the others were just for language learning and I'm interested in English language learning. Now notice how much information you're getting here, so don't be uh, overwhelmed by all this. All right, so now we've got something here. Notice the numbers here. Uh, there are the citations. Well, they're not quite citations, they're just the sources. And if you go into the journals, you'll be able to uh, get this by clicking on it. And then uh, here it is. And this one is for second language acquisition. Excellent. You can ask this paper for questions. Okay, so if we click on that, let's see what we can do here. You can ask the paper. For example, there's the paper. It's 2023. And summarize the paper in a few sentences. Were there any conflicts of interest? Did the authors mention any limitations? And you can ask some more, such as um, the uh, audience. All right, so um, there we go. The audience was um, interview for this review on AI-driven technology and chatbots. Okay, is likely, likely. Okay, that's fine. All right, so we're talking about adults. Okay, so I would like a summary of the study. I like this as the paper feature article and what's there. Technology and chatbots. Okay, and there is the source. It's and we've got the source right here, but we're getting more information this way. So that's one way of doing it with the specific article. We might also, the benefits of using AI in language learning and get information on that. In language teaching and learning, okay, that might not be specific to English, uh, but in general, improving linguistics competence, AI and language learning can make it more efficient. It has the potential to significantly enhance English. Okay, and all these are based on research, which is super important. Okay, you can also learn more by clicking on that. And notice it takes you <laughs> to Wikipedia. That's not where I wanted to go. But at least you have a chance to get some uh, general ideas about some of these uh, topics and the fact that it is connected to um, Wikipedia is not a bad thing. Personalized learning, if that interests you, notice um, there are some research papers here. There's another one, number 10, that we might want to look at. Individualized feedback, adaptive learning pathways, authentic language interactions, all very, very relevant. And you can get uh, citations. You can also load more. We're going to go into the citations because I think this is definitely very, very important. So notice here what you have here. These are the references by APA, MLA, Chicago, Harvard, and Bibtex. Okay, since I use APA, I can copy this for myself. Now, the inline citations you will get within the articles themselves. You can also notice here, share the paper on Twitter or copy the page link for yourself and then share it that way if you wish in your social networks. 
and with your colleagues through email or other means. That's basically it. Okay, that's what we can do on consensus. You can also notice here, favor this, create a new list. So let's say this is my favorite, or you can create a list for the benefits of AI and language learning. Okay, create a new list. Okay, and then you have uh, your favorite paper that you can add to that. Let me know if you have any questions about consensus and how you can use it for research, literature review, if you're in the academia, or if you're just interested in learning about various topics, that's fine too. And I think consensus provides lots of information that are research-based, which is wonderful.